Heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living. Make a better place for you and for me. Okay, guys, I was <laughs> transplanting this... Um, pepper plant that I got on clearance. It was infested. I'm going to show you a lot of the leaves that I took off. Hey guys, be cool. I see this? It's eaten up by uh, a worm or something and that's why they had it on clearance at Lowe's. So I topped this pepper off, guys. I took all of these leaves off right here. And then I said, you know, I should make a video. So here's the, the other one that I got and you can see the leaves are uh, all ate up and they couldn't sell these plants. <laughs> so, I uh, been spraying them for the last couple of days with my neem oil. My, um, of course, water is in here and just a drop of Dawn Dew soap, maybe a couple of drops. And I shake it up right before I get ready to use it. I've been spraying them down every day since I got them. Now I'm getting ready to plant them and I'm going to move the camera a little bit and show you that I've been preparing this container right here. Move back, guys. So, I got this container right here <laughs> ready. You see that? Uh -huh. Because you guys know that I lost my five-year-old pepper plant in the uh, freeze in February. And since these plants were only a dollar on clearance, that I will uh, doctor them and bring them back to health. And then I would plant them in a container because they turn into a uh, real hard wood, almost like a tree. And um, you can keep them for years and they um, produce better than your first year plants. So hold this, Bria. Okay. Don't let it go. Get out the camera. Just hold it. Hold it with two hands. So I'm going to trim off anything that's been ate on or uh, chewed on. And that way I can see if we got any visitors still in the soil. Hold on. Then I'm going to top off the peppers. And you can see they got peppers on them. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Brian loves to dance. The flowers on it. Uh huh, and flowers. To make it the paper. Right, so we're going to just cut it off right here. I you want to hold that up, Brian? Show him how much I took off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine leaves. Fifteen? Fifteen? Yeah. Okay, so then we let I got the plant. Okay, all right, Brian, we already said it. So now, guys, we have this plant ready to be transplanted. Now, it looks kind of naked. But when I show it to you in a couple of months, you're going to see that it's going to have tremendous growth. And since I took that one down a lot, I'm going to take even more off of this one. You want to hold it for me, Brian? Nope. So you see these leaves are chewed up, so we're going to take this one off. This one, we're even going to take this one off. Turn it around, please. We don't care about the fruit that's on here now. We want it to just grow. I'll leave that one on. Okay, so now I'm going to put one here. I'm just going to dig a hole. We got fresh. Oh, no, no, no. Right there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the worm castings mm -hmm. that we, I don't. Oops up. And then we're going to sit it down. We need the, the bowl that Bria is holding. I know she is holding it. And we're going to get some garden lime and some compost. And drop it in a hole. Put a little dirt in there, too. <coughs> And then we're gonna set that down. <laughs> Are you doing that while I'm doing the video? So I edited the part where I chastised Brian for acting silly while I was doing the video. But you guys know the kids will be kids. But uh, yeah, so that's what this pot looks like. And it's not too heavy where I can pick it up and move it into the greenhouse during the winter. Look what we got here. Our first dahlia buds. Let's go closer. First ever, because I've never grown them before. And one over here. Mm. Step back. That's and good. let me go in, go out. And look at Bria. You, you like them? And Brian, do you like them? Yes, they look cool. Yeah, they're going to be really huge flowers. Something was eating them at the bottom there, but the neem oil seemed to have taken care of it. And uh, these were transplanted before uh, the ones in this basket, but we're hoping that 
You see a bug over there too? I see a bug trying to eat. A bug? Okay, kill it. I cannot kill it. Brian, don't push the leaf, babe. I'm not killing with my bare hands. Okay. Okay, guys, this is my fig tree. Let me back up and show you. And we got figs growing all over here. See all the nice figs that are growing, guys? This is phenomenal because the tree died. Half of it died. And it was only one little pencil cutting when I first started off, so it wasn't like it was two in a hole. But this is all dead. Let me pan up so you can see. This is all dead here, and it is May, soon will be June in a couple of days. See how they split, guys? So I'm gonna get my saw out and cut all this out, dead part out. All of this will be gone, and I'll bring it back and let you see how I cleaned it up, okay? All right. You caught right in my face. Sorry. Say use your elbow to cut. Are you still record you still recording? That was cool. This one just came right on off, so you see it? So we don't have to do that one. Let's see if we can take any more of these out. Okay, this is good, but you see right here, this is where you have growth. You see that? but there's no growth here, so I'm gonna take it off about right here. But I need something to hold this back. Well, I'll go up higher, cause I don't wanna damage these leaves here. So that's enough. We're gonna, I'll do the rest of them off the camera. So let me see what you got. Okay guys, so we got the unsightly limbs <laughs> out the way. We still have to get a little bit more of it off. Let me go in closer so you can see that these branches have uh, growth on them. This is too big for me to handle with my saw. So I'll let my sons take those two pieces down. Okay. Okay everybody, this is my second brown turkey fig. You can see that it died all the way down and to almost the ground. So we have, I've been breaking them off as they have uh, been getting uh, real uh, crunchy. But I got three main limbs here and I'm going to take them down today. Okay, I'll be back and show you the after. And here's what the little tree looks like after I took those extra dead limbs off. And it actually has some figs growing on those little branches. Okay guys, Brian and I are going to, you going to say hi? Hi. We're going to uh, plant our bare root gooseberries, gooseberries from Stark Brothers. Now, I want you to look real close. And Brian, I want you to hold it from now on down the bottom like this. Okay. And what the powder that you see on my hands, guys, is something that they put on the uh, New Jersey ninth asparagus. I'm not expecting anything to grow this year. Um but I'm going to plant them so they'll come up next year. Anyway, I have two of them. And we're going to plant these a little bit later. But right now, we're going to transplant in the ground these bare root hinokami, or hinomaki red gooseberries. And we're going to put one in each pot. I have two of those. Put yeah, it right there, baby. Like gooseberries. Mm hmm. And I also have a Invicta 
gooseberry and we're gonna plant that one now i don't see any life any green coming out of here at all but i do see evidence of green on this one and this one so we're just gonna put some regular potty mix in it and get it ryan started. has learned how to work smart he reminded me why don't we put them over there before we water them up under the peach trees because I was reading to him that it has to have shade. He is so smart. And, I, and this, guys, I'm gonna tell you, he is going to remember, he and Bria are going to remember everything that they learned when they were young. You wanna smile, Brian? <laughs> okay. Brian has already mastered how to use that dazzling smile. Just watch him in slow motion. Just watch. There he goes. That smile would just light up a room. <laughs> I love my great angel, Brian. I love all my great angels. Okay, so this is the newest tree to my collection. I had to replace uh, my improved Meyer lemon trees. So I decided to just buy one. And uh, as you can see, since I've got it, it's been flushing out with new growth. See the light color leaves? Sure has. Okay, let me show you the other lemon tree. This is the Lisbon lemon tree. I decided to try something else since I was starting over with the lemon trees. And you can see all of these yellow leaves here or yellowish green. These are new growth since I purchased the tree. Anything that's a light yellow, you know that it will get darker as it ages. And on the same day that I got that one, I got another Satsuma tree and it is doing awesome. It is a Arctic freeze. It's a very cold hardy one. And it has a lot of new growth on it. And just look over here, guys. All of that new growth, just so pretty. Very pretty. So if it does anything like my Miho Satsuma, it should do very well. Now let me show you the grapefruit. I acquired this uh, grapefruit recently. I showed it to you all not too long ago. It had one little grapefruit on it when I bought it and it's right there. But now, boy oh boy oh boy, it's loaded. See the little fruiting buds? All over here. I wasn't expecting anything until a couple of years. Look right here, guys. It's really flushing out. And you know, citrus, when they're young, they would drop leaves. And they will also drop a lot of fruit, so I'm not counting anything yet. Now, this is my soursop trees. This is the tree that makes tea, that I make tea. I don't even care if I ever get any soursop fruit. I had to trim a lot of leaves off of it because it was spoiled being in the house because it doesn't like the high humidity of the greenhouse. It would surely have died uh, in the big freeze if I had it in there, so I'm glad I had it in the house because um, it can't take any temperature lo uh, lower than 40 degrees. But I told you guys a few weeks ago when it was dropping all the leaves because it got sunburned like this, even though it was half shaded, uh, they, they're just finicky trees. But I told you all of that, those leaves will grow back. Can you see them? They're growing back. All the little tiny leaves. And I grew this tree from seeds. Now I'm gonna show you the other tree over here I started this one at the same time and there's some damage but I don't worry about it because I've gone through it before it is putting on new growth anything that you see real light and real small in color it's putting on new growth you can see some right there and these trees the one I just showed you and then this one they were grown from seed at the same time, but last summer I put them in different spots and this one just took off. So to just let you know, no two seeds are the same. Okay? All right. If this is the one, this is a Kalamondon tree. It was a twig when I got it years ago. I think this is the third year. I, it's grown twice its size and I've cut it off to bring it inside the house. It survived, but all of these lighter color leaves, they are all new. And I gave it a foliar spray, I believe it was yesterday. I know it was yesterday because we have uh, two days of uh, no rain. 
And see, it looks like here, the first thing you will reach for is some type of nitrogen, but it actually needs iron. My research taught me that. Okay, see that yellow discoloration? It needs iron. So I gave it an iron uh, foliar spray. So now I showed you all of my citrus trees. Continuing with the tour of the food forest, here is stevia and impatience that I'm gonna learn how to uh, extract the natural sweetness out of stevia. And I'll be sharing that with you in another video. And over here is lemongrass that survived in the greenhouse during the big freeze. And I thought this one was dead, so I'm shading it, but it's coming back and it'll be ready for full sun in about another week. Still baby in it. Now in my last video, I very briefly shared with you my elderberry bushes. I have four of them. Uh, the seller was only selling the little trees for $5. And he wasn't sure if he was giving me the same type. They were supposed to be native elderberries that grow in ditches in, this, in the North Texas. But I'm learning that all four of them are the same type. And I need a different one to uh, cross pollinate. And, but I'm not going to even worry about it because I was doing some research and they said that the elderberry flowers make excellent syrup, champagne, and wine. So I'm going to do that because I'm running out of room to keep buying uh, trees or bushes. And I keep calling elderberry. Here's the other one by the uh, gate. I keep calling them trees, but they're not trees. They're, they're bushes, but they grow really tall really tall and beautiful these flowers are really pretty i'm interested in um learning i joined the elderberry group on facebook and that's why i'm learning all these information you can look on google and everything else but it's good to talk to people who have grown this and have experienced this okay so next to my elderberries i have my noble muscadines and this is the third year and they're on a bench trellis and they're doing really well. They um, come in kind of uh, slow in the season and they will be ready to harvest in, I believe, August. Each year prior to last year, I just got a few dozen or, you know, about a pound of uh, muscadines. But last year I got nine pounds. I'm anticipating to get even more this year because the vines have spread a lot and they're actually over the fence and uh, I already showed you that when I'm showing you about the spray that I'm using on what I'm going to show you next which is my Concord grapes and by the way I only have two vines muscadines one on each side of that bench that you can't really tell it's a bench now here still some muscadines but basically are the Concord grapes and I'm fighting a fungus with them. See that? This is what it looks like. And they're worthless. After the rain, and we're gonna pull as many of these off as we can. Toward the end of my grape harvesting season, I noticed a fungus on my grapes. I will look it up and tell you what it is. I can't think of the name right now. I did apply a antifungal called Serenade, but I think it was too late. And this year, because of all of the rain that we have received, I'm seeing evidence of that fungus earlier. So I did some research and I found out that this is, is organic or good for organic gardening. And it's supposed to help uh, kill that fungus. I'm thinking it's soil borne because it came back. My books that I purchased from the Master Gardener said that Concord grapes were good to grow in my area but anyway um i'm gonna go over there and spray all of those vines real good and then i'm gonna go outside of my uh gate here and spray all on the other side even though it's gonna rain hopefully because it's a foliar spray some of it would get into the uh, these vines and branches and then when we're not expected to get any rain i'll do the second dose Another thing I want to share, guys, is even though 
this fungus did not affect my muscadine grapes last year I'm just gonna go ahead and spray them all as a preventative spray and just because the so-called experts tell you something is resistant to disease in your area don't get upset if something doesn't work out for you that's why you have to throw a lot of different types of things that you like and then you will find what works or grows well in your particular food forest or garden. I had a false sense of security last year with my grapes. I assumed that everything was fine. To keep the birds from eating them, I netted them up with several uh, bird nets. And I didn't see, and it was green, that netting in color. So I didn't see the damage until it was too late. So if you're gonna use a net, make sure that you periodically check it and I'm not gonna net them this year. Now here is some asparagus that my landscaper covered up. It's coming back, so I'm gonna let it grow. And I've got some more asparagus I'm gonna plant. I'm this sure. is a pecan tree, it's in the ground. This is the fourth year, it's growing like crazy. I don't know what it's gonna produce because it is a uh, volunteer that I found growing in one of my citrus trees. And I'm gonna insert the pictures of it and show you how it progressed and how it's growing tremendously well. And I've been told that I'm gonna to have to graft several different varieties if I want to have a, a decent a pecan. Because just because you find one that's been growing from a pecan, it doesn't necessarily mean that your tree is going to produce the same pecan. Now, right over there in that corner is Texas White Star Hibiscus. Texas Star, it's a white one. I put seeds out there a couple of years ago and nothing came up and last year it popped up and it's really growing. So I'm thankful for that, it's spreading out here. Let me go back some, so. Yeah, we're gonna have some white ones this year. That's pretty cool. Now here is my sea of comfrey and it is growing tall. The bees, look at that honey bee right there. The biggest one I've ever seen. No, it's not the biggest one, but it's pretty big. But you can see bees are swarming all over it. And I'm gonna be making some comfrey tea, enough for the whole year. I'm gonna chop all of this down. And me and my grand angels will fill up about five buckets of comfrey. And you can see I've got comfrey over here growing next to the pecan tree. Comfrey in that corner over there. I have comfrey down here. I'm putting comfrey all around the food forest. Okay? Now, I'm going to have to work and see if I can fix my tripod, but in the meantime, I bought a selfie stick with extension on it, so I'm enjoying it because it's, it allows me to uh Oh, look at the butterfly. Let's go in closer. So, plant you some comfort, guys. Utilize it for fertilizer and utilize it for attracting pollinators to your yard. Okay, now I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna show you those two trees over there by the back fence. They're growing tremendously well. Those are pawpaw trees. Each of them are a different variety. One is sunflower, one is um, Pennsylvania, and then I think this is the S.A. Leafs is right here. I accidentally forgot about putting it in the moving it i put it here but i didn't realize that it was going to grow uh into the country you can see it right here all in here i'm going to move this tree absolutely move it next fall and i'm gonna put it right there where you, that see that butterfly is right there i'm going to put it directly behind there okay and here is the biggest tree since my gala apple tree died I'm gonna go out and show you how big it is. That's a 40 gallon pot down in the ground. And it's loaded with apples. Beautiful, beautiful apples. I thin the apples out on this tree. I may take a few more off right there. 
closer on that tip right there. It's one, two, three, four, maybe one, two, many. So I may thin that out a little bit. And right next to this apple tree are two mimosa trees. Again, they like the uh, sour sops. We started on the same day, two years ago. Put them in separate places in the food forest. This one stays small. And this one grew larger. They can become invasive. That's why I put them toward the back of the food forest where, you know, there's a lot of space for country to grow. So it won't bother anything. And that tree right there is in a container. So I don't care how big they get. I'm growing them so that they can attract pollinators. I heard hummingbirds really love them. Okay. Now, let me show you this tree over here. It is a Santa Rosa plum. I kid you not, guys. When Stark Brothers sent it to me, we put this twig down. It was the size of this twig right here. And now you can see it's growing tremendously well. Eventually, it, I may have to move this tree too so I can have this owl way in here. I don't know. I'm not gonna try to do it myself. I'll pay somebody professional to do it. Okay, and so next to it, Another apple tree. It's doing well. Doesn't have a lot of fruit on it. And then I have a pear tree in the ground right here. This is the tree that had fire blight from getting too much nitrogen, but it's doing really well. And I'm gonna let this tree grow as tall as it want to be. And you can see the fruit here and here see that it's loaded with fruit. I'm very happy because I almost gave up on this tree. It had fire blight three years in a row and every year I just kept cutting the disease part down. It started out looking like this and I suspect because the, the tree is mature and it can fight off the blight I still believe it's a remnant of that fire blight in this tree. So my research has taught me the older that the tree gets, the more healthy it becomes and it can fight out fire blight. Now I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna show you, uh, this tree had fire blight too. I cut it all the way down to, let's see. You can see that where that brown and scab has healed over. This is where I cut this tree down all the way across and it just keeps growing and it's in the ground. I put it where the gala apple tree was. I think I showed you everything else in the fruit forest. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I love you and God loves you too. Bye now. See you real soon.